I've added a new chapter to the ebook in this document section 002. And what we're going to look at is how to add a footnote to a chapter. So let's have a look in InDesign at this chapter. And we can see here that there's a footnote around the word Aiden and the footnote showing up here down the bottom. So that's fine. So that's what we've got to look for. So we've got to add this footnote but in a different way in Sigil. So let's find the location first of all in Sigil of where the reference to the footnote lives. So in Sigil, just scrolling down looking for that chapter. There we go. So there's Aiden right there. So what I'm going to do is just at the back of Aiden here, I'm going to create manually create a reference. And I'll call that one. So it's just some text at the moment. And what we'll do is we'll go down to the end of the chapter and place our footnote. So let's create the space for it. Back to InDesign. Let's copy that footnote text. And in Sigil, paste that in place. So the, the one didn't come because it's part of InDesign's referencing system. So we'll put that in manually. And let's call it footnote one. And then we have a footnote. So we now have a text in place. So we've got to do two things. First thing is to create an anchor. Now an anchor is a destination. It's where we want the reader to go if they click the footnote reference that's in the text, which is up near the word Aiden. So first of all, let's select all of this text and come up here to insert an ID. So now let's create the name of the destination where we're going to. So I'm going to call this footnote underscore one. So now we have a piece of text located in the document that has an identity. It's a destination. Let's have a quick look at the code and see what's been placed there. Code view down at the bottom of the file. We can see here we've got an anchor tag it has an ID, footnote underscore one. Then this text is gathered within the anchor tag which ends there and it closes and so we have an anchor. So this is very similar to a link that has a URL that takes you to an external website, same idea but it functions differently. It functions within the document. Now let's go and find our piece of text with the word Aiden. There it is there. Okay. I'm going to select just the one in its square brackets and I'm going to create a link or an insert a link there. Let's have a look at that. Now we've got to select the target where this link is going to go to when somebody clicks it and there we find footnote one that I just created which is the destination within the document. So we'll select that. And now you can see that that footnote reference is underlined and is an active link. So let's have a look at the code and see what that shows us about what we've just created. So here we see Aiden and the obligatory non-breaking space, of course. We'll take that out. And we have the beginning of an anchor tag. Except this time, rather than being an href to an external website, the reference is footnote underscore one, designated with a hashtag in the front. Then we have our clickable text, which is the, the reference one. And you can see there that the anchor closes. Back to book view. So, 
How does this work? When somebody's reading the chapter on their iPad and they come here and they want to see what that reference is, they click it and it takes them to the destination footnote. So I'd like to make that look different so that it's very clear that it's a footnote to the text and not actually part of the story. So just going back to InDesign, you can see here that there's a, a nice horizontal line there that doesn't go the full width and I like the style of that. Back to Sigil. How do we create that? So the first thing is let's create a paragraph. Let's put a horizontal line in here. Something similar to what we've seen in InDesign. So I'm going to right click in the space, go to Clips, Text, Miscellaneous and Sigil has an inbuilt HR, horizontal rule element here. So let's click on that and you can see we've inserted a horizontal line, the full width. So that's part of what we need to do. Let's go and have a look at the code and see what that is. So here we can see this is the last line of our story, of our chapter. This is the new element, horizontal rule. Let's make that a little clearer. And here we have a paragraph which is our footnote. I'll just make that a little clearer also. So what we're working here with is the horizontal rule. You can see over here on the preview, it's sitting there, it's full width. It's pretty much in the middle of those two paragraphs. So what do we need to do to make that look the way that it looked in InDesign? I'll open the style file because part of the solution is there. Okay, now in our style file, and we'll cover this more fully in another tutorial, you can see here that I've got two HR references, and this is the one that we're interested in here. So HR refers to the horizontal rule, and footnote or dot footnote is its class. So it's a class that's been predefined. So we're going to use that piece of information in our code. Let's go back to our chapter and down to the bottom of our footnote. Now how do we apply the class footnote to this particular horizontal rule? It's straightforward. I'm going to do this manually. Create a space. I'm going to type in class and then equals. So the class equals and you'll see here on the right hand side how we're getting an alert now because we've got some incomplete code. So we'll finish that off over here. So the class equals, put that in between two quotes and type in our class name, which is footnote. Now as I've done that, the preview is updated and you'll see that our horizontal rule has taken on some new characteristics. So how does that work? Let's have a look at the style file and see how the class footnote affects our horizontal rule. So over in the right hand side we've got a small preview of the horizontal rule. So let's use that as a reference. Imagine that the horizontal rule is contained within an invisible box. It would have a top margin, a right margin, a bottom margin and a left margin. So that's the space between the box going outwards from the box. In our style here, under the margin definition, we have top, right, bottom, left. That's the order. Top, right, bottom, left. Let's see what happens when we change some of these settings. So at the moment we've currently got a 30 pixel top margin. So if I change that to 50, and you keep an eye on the preview here, you'll see the change. So by increasing the margin setting here, we've affected all of the horizontal rules that have this class applied to them in the whole document by increasing the space above the rule. I'll change that back to 30. Now the right margin is 75%, so that means that the 75% of white space on the right 
of the box. So if I change that to 50%, you'll see that the horizontal rule, what's visible of it is now 50% of the full 100% width of our preview window. Change that back to 75%. The bottom margin is minus 10. Now to demonstrate that, I'll just change that to 0. And at 0, you see that there is a kind of a natural space that's allowed there. That's not really 0. So what I need to do is to force that down minus 10 pixels to snug that horizontal rule up with the top of footnote. And then we have that. And the left margin is 0. So that means that the horizontal rule is sitting at the left margin of the screen. So if I change that to 20 pixels, then you'll see here that the horizontal rule has become indented 20 pixels from the left margin. So back to 0. So we'll have a good look at styles in another tutorial that you begin to understand how these margin settings work. Back to our chapter and our beautiful new footnote. This has been a tutorial on inserting a footnote in a chapter.